is a 360. And we'll do a 360, and there's a couple things we want to hit in the 360, and we want to put that out on the main on the main dispatch channel so everybody initially dispatched hears it, the other stations hear it, people with their pagers hear it. And what we're gonna what we're gonna recommend is at the end of the 360, before you mask up and do anything now, you're gonna end your 360 with, and mm -hmm. we're changing to channel two or, or Mavis uh, FD Command one or conventional, is do your initial radio report, your 360 follow-up report on your dispatch channel. And the last thing on your 360 is your communications plan. You know, I, I've told you what the problem is. I told you what my plan is. I've assumed command. I got a 360, which I'm looking for hazards and basements. I declare those. And the last thing you're going to hear from me on the dispatch channel is dispatch or switching to fire ground. In our agency, it is we're switching to fire ground. Please monitor our FD3. And then after that, this incident has been dispatched. It's been arrived. It's been sized up. The plan has been communicated, and now we're beginning tactical operations on a different channel. So that's where we recommend you fit that in is at the end of the 360, which is coming up. What do you do with mutual aid coming in if you're on your FD3? Do you just uh, patch the Mavis? No, we're, our, you know, our, our goal is to, is to avoid patching. So, so what, we've, what we're doing now is once a fire is dispatched, we're asking our shift commander or the first officer that's on the radio is to announce the box alarm assignment. I want a full response or I want a box alarm card, 63 INF3 and please assign an incident profile. So we're asking for the county for a Mavis incident profile on every fire, because if I get there and decide that I need it, now I have it. Now our goal is all incoming units to, to be on the Fire Command 1 profile. Or if we're on Profile 2, it'd be the uh, Fire Command uh, Talk Group 2. So that, that's the first talk group in there, and that's when the incident commander is going to be on. That's the one we're going to ask all our incoming mutual aid to contact the IC on the command channel, because sometimes originally we had like a Mavis uh, one one, and we make that the command channel. Well, that's confusing. There's a dedicated command channel for it. So why, we're going to use the dedicated command channel in the in that incident profile for the incident commander to talk to all incoming mutual aid. Now, if we get a staging area set up, and there's a staging officer, now there's a staging channel. But every incoming unit is always going to check with the IC first. Uh, you know, a Highland Engine 2, we're, appro command, we're approaching your scene, and you're calling the commander on, on Fire Command 1, he may say, go ahead and go to staging, contact the staging officer on Stage 1. Now, if, if I don't want you to go to staging, I need that engine right now. Forget staging. Come on right in here, approach from the east, and lay a, lay a supply line. So we're going to have every incoming unit, every engine, every tanker, every ambulance, check with the IC on FD Command 1, and if I don't want you, I will pass you off. Now, if you're an incoming ambulance and you say this is this is Oxford Alpha One on Fire Command One, and I have a uh, this is a this is a nursing home and I got a lot of people and I got an EMS group going, you know you have no idea what positions I have assigned. So then I'll push you down to Oxford Alpha Two. Go, you're going to be assigned to the EMS uh, uh, group. Contact the EMS officer on Countywide EMS One. The IC can like play dealer and deal this stuff down. But we until we may not have any of that set up. If you're the first due unit on the second alarm. And even though we have a staging area, I got a great spot picked out. I got no one to man it. Because <laughs> on a, five, a second alarm in Independence, if I got a spare man, I'm not putting him in as a staging officer, let me tell you. I got some other stuff for him to do. So the first due unit, you contact me on Fire Command 1, I say Highland Engine 2, go to the staging area, walk and don't walk. And by the way, monitor staging 1 because you're the staging officer. <laughs> you got there first and now you're talking to me on Fire Command 1. Anybody else that comes in, the next due engine, I say, hey, go to staging and talk to the staging officer. And now next thing you know, uh, White Lake Engine 3 to staging. Oh, that's me. <laughs> and you're going to answer. So that's, that's our plan is to always get the Mavis incident profile on every fire in case we need it. Uh, and then always have the request the incoming mutual aid contact us on the Fire Command talk group and we will add extra talk groups if we need them. Most second alarm fires, Fire Command 1 will be plenty. Uh, if we get staging set up, maybe EMS, maybe water supply, you know, we're planning to use the, foot, the last Mavis tactical channel as the water supply. So Mavis, you're going to get Mavis 1, 1, and 1, 2, and 1, 3, and 1, 4. We're always using the fourth one for water supply. We'll get into that in just a minute. There's a slide for that. If, you have, if you're not really good on the profiles or on the radio, they're all laid out. I think some of you probably aren't. Um, you're not, you're not uh, alone, but we'll get into that in a minute. We'll really hit that hard because we're finding that's probably one of the biggest issues we're having in the county and the Vegas division. And I just don't understand how this radio system is set up to work in the, in the overall picture. So we're going to hit that hard too. So there's more size ups in here. We, you know, we won't go through all of them, but you know, use these with your crews 
and the, and the script is on the right so that you can play karaoke with them on the size up. So the first engine got there and gave a size up. They're going to stop the truck. Now they're going to step out of the truck. We're going to come back to accountability, but the first thing we want them to do when they step off the truck is attach their accountability tag. We don't want to say, go do a 360, then come back and stick their accountability tag, because if they get in the back and get distracted by a shiny object or, or a rescue presents itself, hey, ma'am, I'll be right back. I need to put this tag on this truck. It's not going to happen. So as soon as they step off the truck, they attach the accountability tag, and we'll talk about that, and then they're going to do a 360. The 360... Then they're going to, when that's done, they're going to transmit a follow-up report still on your main, your dispatch channel. And what we want in the 360 is the results of it. Anything that you heard, that you see, uh, any safety concerns, if you're going to change your action plan based on the 360, the accountability location. Anybody else that's coming after you, where do you want them to stick their tags? Which is always going to be your, your engine, your first due engine. We'll stick it on there until IC number two gets there. Uh, and then the communications plan. This is where if you're changing channels, you want incoming people to do something different, now's the time to hear it. So if I get to this house, uh, engine one's on the scene of a medium two-story residential with smoke showing or a working fire on the first floor. Engine one's taking a hand line through the A side for fire attack, search and rescue. We're in the offensive strategy. Engine one has command, upgrade to a box alarm. I get out of the truck and I stick my accountability tag on there, do everything up, and start to do a 360. When I get to the back side of this, I thought, I thought that fire was on the first floor and now I see this thing, this is a basement fire. Dispatch from command, go ahead. Uh, this house at 360 is complete. I have a standard basement. This is a working fire in the basement. Engine one will be repositioning our hand line to the Charlie side for an exterior attack. Accountability will be on the alpha side at engine one. And if I had any uh, uh, power lines down or any immediate safety concerns, Dispatch all units. I have a propane tank for an exposure. Uh, you know, we have defensive fire conditions, the roof's coming in, Any, anything that, that needs to be said right now in the main dispatch channel before we start. And then we're going to end with uh, dispatch. We're switching to fire ground. Please monitor our FD3 or we're switching to channel 2 so that the initial report and the follow report all happen on the dispatch frequency. And now before I put my mask on, in our department, we're going to one pound, switch over, uh, and operate in the fire ground channel. The basements, just a, qu a, a quick note on those so that we can standardize the basement type. Uh, you know, walk, we have a, either a walkout basement, uh, no basement, 360 is complete, house has no basement. 360 is complete, house is a standard basement. 360 is complete, house has a walk-up basement. Not a full walkout, but we've dug down and put a door in here. Or it, in some older downtown communities, maybe an English basement, usually a, a walk down on the A side steps down about a half story and the first floor steps up so they call that an, an English basement. Just so that it, the point of this is before we go inside that first crew could fall in the basement so if we have a walkout basement let's figure that out real quick here as part of this 360 before we send somebody in there we don't want to have somebody fall in and then run around for out as a walkout basement or that it's a basement fire and we're above it and we have no idea so that 360 part of it is give you a better idea to figure out where the fire is find out if we have a basement and, but the other thing is, what, what could be, who could be hanging out the back window? There may be somebody trapped, somebody asking for help, somebody about. So if you miss that and pull up, and you're going to go in and put out the fire and do an excellent job of knocking down the fire and miss the fact that the sole person trapped here was at a window, but they were in the back, so you never saw them. So that, the 360 is, is just as important as that initial size up. We'll transmit a follow-up report and then change our channels. Uh, and we talked about the accountability location. That does a couple things. When I say engine one's the accountability in the A side, it clarifies the A side. Every once in a while that can trip you up when you get a house on the corner or you get one, right? Someone builds one of those modern homes and it's an octagon or a crooked or like, so what is the A side of this thing? When I said engine one is accountability in the A side, I've lined this thing up, right? I gave you a compass where my fire truck is parked. That's what I get to call the A side. That's the accountability and, I, and I've kind of drawn a map for you. And then we talked about the communications plan. Uh, everybody's doing this a little bit differently. I'm a firm believer in going to the conventional fire ground. Uh, all the near miss studies, I mean, that, I'm, I'm kind of nerdy. That's what I do you know, on my days off when I have to go to the bathroom is I have near miss studies I like to read. Uh, but it, it's important that, to, to know the limitations of the digital system. In high heat, commercial buildings, those are all worst case scenarios. So I, I think you can get away with going to your channel two and operating on that digital on a residential structure fire where everything goes well. 
Uh, my concern is in a very high heat, rapid fire change, digital, you might have had coverage and you lose coverage. You get into, deep into a commercial building, you had coverage on the first floor, then when you fell in the basement, the number one time I needed radio coverage, now I don't have it, I'm in the basement. Uh, we, we, we have not found those issues with conventional. Uh, and then the, the whole grant tone thing, right? You gotta wait for the beep to talk, and, and, and I don't like that. It reminds me of like trying to talk on a Nextel. Uh, when you first got it, you know, you, you talk too soon, and then it beeped, and you cut yourself off. That's, that's what I see with, with an air pack and the digital. So, you, you know, everybody's free to use whatever you want for the hazard zone channel. Uh, I, I would recommend that, you know, you, you know lobby or connive or, or have a vote or whatever you need to do in your department to get to using fire ground conventional. Every agency got pyramids through the grant so that you can take the conventional. When that conventional hits the truck, the truck can send it back out over a digital. So now we've got the best of both worlds. The guys in the hazard zone are on conventional. The pyramid's going to put it on digital. So now people on your FD3 or your FD2, your dispatch can hear all that. So uh, I would recommend conventional, but you're, 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 we're, again, we're all free to mismanage our own fires however we see fit. And whether it's your FD2, an incident profile, uh, if you've got a shared talk group, Rochester, Auburn Hills, those guys, they create a talk group, Rochester Area Ops, and that's what they switch to. Uh, it's still a digital channel. And then there's pyramids and VTAC and all those things are in play, but that's, that's a local decision how you handle that. And then the last thing you're going to do is implement your, your implement action plan. You did your 360, you switch to the fire ground, I'm throwing my mask on, and we're going to go in here and uh, these just got done with the 360. They're going to put this fire out. One of these guys is the IC. The next due crew, they might be just waiting for this other truck to come down the street and they're just getting ready and now they tell that other crew and we're going to talk about what on deck means. Engine two, stretch a hand line off engine one to the A side, go on deck and we're going to go in here and put that fire out. So we'll talk about the on deck term. So before we get into the accountability, let's take about a, a, about a 10 or 15 minute break and then the, the beatings will continue until morale improves. All right? so. pieces here, the, the various levels of, of accountability, we'll, we'll, we'll run through this because there was a lot of talk on level one accountability, level two, level three, one tag, two tag. So the first level, the administrative accountability is optional. Some people have people on duty and they want to write down the names or they have a board that shows who's working. Uh, we encourage you to do that. If you have it, it's probably called a schedule of who, who's working. If you put accountability <coughs> after it, you get credit. So when you go into accidents and medicals and all this stuff, everybody that's on the schedule slash accountability, that's your first level. And so in, in Independence, ours is a magnetic board. We just have some, some pieces that they should set up by the day so we know who's working. So on paper, I'm gonna call this our, our administrative accountability, which is our schedule. If you don't have anybody in your stations, uh, some places have on-call groups. You know, call it your call schedule slash you know initial accountability. This does not go to the scene. Okay, this is just in-house stuff. But the the next level up is, is the task level accountability. The people they think that well, wait a minute, what, what pieces and parts are used in task level? None. But this is the most important accountability system, and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention it. That we're sending people in in, in pairs for a reason. So keep track of each other. The, the law says you have to maintain voice, visual, or touch contact with your partner. And that's the most important piece of all of this. So I know you came to get the Velcro, uh, but the Velcro will not tell anybody if you fall from the floor. It's your buddy that's going to do that. So even if you send somebody, you know, I've been in mutual aids and then people come back, well, they didn't have very good accountability. But the people are split up. Well, either did you. So the first level of accountability is task level. You've got to go in as a crew. You need to come out as a crew. The more complicated and the bigger the scene gets, the more important this is. The enter and exit through the same access point. If you go in the A side, come out the A side. Unless you have some emergency that compels you to hop out a window or rappel down with your life rope or come running out through the basement, come back out the same place they sent you in. Continue to use that in and out, even though it might be shorter sometimes. I'm going to run around, grab a pipe wall, come back around the basement and meet you. Go in and out the same way because when this thing gets bigger and we start to talk about divisions and groups, it is so easy to lose track of people when you don't know their names, you don't know what truck they came on, so that's critical. Air management, we could teach all day on air management alone. If you're not already doing some air management drills, 
and talking about the, the moral of that story is you cannot wait until you vibrate to leave. And that, that's how we've always done it. And the problem is that works when everything goes right. And if you try to leave and get lost, you don't have enough air. If you go in a commercial building, you don't have enough air. So air management is a, is a huge topic. If you've seen all the new SCBAs, they, they know. They're trying to firefight proof them. If you're, you're vibrating at a quarter right now and you work till you vibrate, they're moving it up to 33% now. So all new SCBAs are going to vibrate at 33% because people are running out of air trying to exit buildings. And then the point of no return. Uh, you need to start training in your department that what's the round trip ticket on this thing. And usually, statistically, 150, maybe 175 feet is an average for all firefighters. How far can you stretch a line, operate, and come back out and have enough air? And that, there's a point of no return here. In general, that comes from the airline industry. When they're flying from the U.S. to Europe, there comes a point where they have an emergency uh, where they're, out and they're beyond the point of no return. They're, they're going to have some serious problems. So the same thing is, and when we start talking about small, medium, and large, that IC number one is saying that, but what that means to IC number two, when I say a large structure, if it's, oh, I can't, I got a 200 foot hand line and I can't get to 50% of the building, for IC number two, that means two entrances. That means we're gonna have to put lines in the A side and the line's gonna have to come into the B side. So IC number two, tactically, that means two engines on different sides. That means two different accountability points. Just by you saying I have a working fire in a large two story residential. We ain't fighting this thing only from the A side. That means if I'm going to have to stretch two and a half, one out, something's going to change. So task level accountability, even though there's no pieces and parts and fortune cookies that come with this, this is the most important piece of this entire system. And you can drill on that. For, 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 there's plenty of training here on air management, point of no return, and, and task level accountability for your own agencies. What you came here for tonight, the next level up, tactical level accountability. The, the, this is a few pieces. The first one, when we say accountability tag, we're talking about the single tag with somebody's name on it. And they're yellow for firefighters uh, and they're red for officers. So everybody, we've purchased three of these for everybody on your department. The goal, the purpose is for you to issue two and keep one because they will lose one, right? It's gonna be, it should be like a contest. Who's gonna lose theirs first and who can go the longest without losing their accountability tag? So the point is don't, uh, don't give all three to the firefighter. Give them two. You know, and it's really two per set of gear, but if you have two sets of gear, you split them up, but they, probably the location we envision these being mounted is under the brim. If they're outside and you have one off, uh, it takes some heat, I mean, it's plastic, right? It's not special fireproof plastic. It's made by the low bidder. So this thing goes under the brim just so that we don't, it doesn't get melted. Uh, and we'll, so if somebody says, give me your accountability tag, we're talking about the name tag. And we give you sticky Velcro, the other fuzzy side to put in there. Somebody said, you know, I'll put one on this side and we'll put one on this side. I don't care what you do. I really don't. Do what works for you on this. This is not a big deal. Mount them. Get them out there. The next, the next level, those name tags are intended to go onto a passport. So the passport is what collects. This is, this is for each apparatus. Some apparatus have one. Uh, working apparatus, engines, and ladders will have four. And so the names of that crew, the people that are going in at, as a task level crew, if you've got a two-person crew, a three-person crew, all go on the same passport. So what it ends up looking like is if this is this truck comes to Independence on a mutual aid, Auburn Hills Truck Two, and they and they have this is crew number four. There's an officer and three firefighters on this crew. When they check in, they're going to hand the entire passport with the crew on it to the incident commander, and we'll talk about how the incident commander moves these around on the, on the chessboard. The last piece, there's an orange company identifier on the bottom. When this starts, when this thing escalates, right now the incident commander has all the tags. If we start splitting this up into groups and divisions, and I'm gonna give, give a section of this building to somebody else to manage, the person that's managing that division is gonna get the passport from everybody they're managing. Now the IC has nothing. I, I knew who I had, now I got nothing because I gave it away. So this orange company identifier allows us to peel off, the IC can retain it if you give the passport away to a division officer, somebody managing a side of the building, a floor. So the IC can see everybody, all the crews that they have. So that, that's another step. Most fires will go out without ever getting to that step. Probably residential structure fires with two or three hose lines working, you're going to end up with a couple crews and you're going to knock it down, a mutual aid's going to come in and they might get assigned something and the fire goes out. We may never get to the point where we start pulling these things off. But on a bigger building, a strip mall or something, or a big house, when we start dividing into groups and divisions, we want the IC to know uh, who they have. Disclaimer number one, 
There's three of them tonight, three mistakes we made putting this together. Disclaimer number one, that says AHF Truck 2. What does that say at the top? AHF Truck 2 Crew 4. We, had a, uh, we made a decision in the beginning. On your engines, maybe your ladders, your rescues, your tankers, things that would probably end up in front of the building or the, your working engine or... We said, well, there's, here's one passport on one engine, okay? I come up and log in on this. We, we, we give it to the incident commander or whatever. Now I got six, eight, 10, 12, 14 more guys show up. There's no more passports. We used the one off the one engine in front of the building. That's not gonna fly. So on, we let you determine how many apparatus you felt were that important. Your brush trucks probably weren't, your alpha units probably weren't, whatever, but your engines, your ladders, your tankers. We gave you four of these, and that's where we got into crew one, crew two, crew three, crew four. The company didn't include that in the orange tag. They've remade them all. They're all here. So before we leave tonight, we have a little homework project that we've got to change some things out. I changed some out today, but all the orange tags did not get the crew four. So now I could have AHF truck two, four of those on my board, and I don't know that there, which one is crew one, two, three, or four. So we have to change that out. So there's disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two, if you look on your tactical worksheet, these are supposed to be metal boards. Metal, aluminum boards painted. You could write on them, clean them off. They're not here yet. I've got to get them to you. So we ran these off. These are just exact replicas of what you're going to get. You're going to get four of these per department. They're aluminum. Write on them. The alcohol prep, clean them off whatever. If you notice at the top, there's a phone number for the divisional dispatch. Has anybody here got a 258 area code? Yeah. No. Nah. We do now because it's on the damn board. So some of you will probably will get boards that have a 258. Ignore that the, the area code is 248. That's an error. They had half of them done when we caught it. Gary caught it. I'd looked at this thing 300 times. And we just missed it. So there's disclaimer number two. Okay. Steve, so, you know when the boards are going to come in? I'm hoping next week. These just showed up today, so I'm into this game here of changing all these out. And you're going to have to hang it. Don't leave here tonight. If you got, and I've got the sign-in sheets from before, so I got your orange tags from like Oxford. They were here. I saw them the first day. We ripped off all the orange ones. I put them in a bag, and I got them. The problem is, this has crew one, two, three, and four. You may have an alpha one, and there's only one passport. Well, there's not crew one, two, three, four, but I got your tag now. I got your unit identifier, and you need to get that back. So that's in this bag. I'm going to give you this bag. There's a little project we got here tonight, so hang in there, all right? You're playing poker with the yeah, teacher you Yeah, that's go. right. Uh, the, the, only other, the only other optional piece of this on, on the, uh, is this. If you have a driver, uh, if you have an apparatus operator in a hazard zone, if you go to the next slide, is this. If someone's staying with the truck on the turntable, but the truck's in the hazard in the collapse zone, you're not going inside, you show up the crew of four, and someone's staying with the truck, uh, you have the option of putting that upside down so, they're not, so that we know they're with the truck, or not putting them on the crew yeah. at all. If you come to mutual aid and they're not going in there, and they're staying out for some reason, they don't have to be on the passport. But if this is a ladder truck operating in the collapse zone, the thing falls outward, and we want to know who is with that truck. It's at the bottom and upside down. It's an indication that person is not going inside the structure. And I want to tell you, I totally disagree with putting it upside down. That's my own opinion. If the guy's running in the truck, he's not in the hazard zone, I don't care if he's in the accountability system. A lot of people, this accountability thing, before we standardized across the, the division, this was a roster of everybody that was on the scene. That's the way they treated this. Everybody that's here, Give me your tag and I'm going to have it. I don't care if the guy's down turning a hydrant on, sitting over here, running a truck, whatever. I don't care about those people. I want to know when that building collapses who in the hell we're going after. That's all I care about. And that's what this system was designed around. So this game is a passport rule that they have that we've passed on to you, but really and truly, I don't want that dude on my passport. Steve, am I getting ahead of things or what? Because I mean, maybe I am. But okay, I I send you in. Uh, you come in on engine one. Yep. You checked in. Yep. You went in. You you did that. Okay. You come back out. You go to staging. And you come back crew. out and see me, and then I'll decide so, what I want to do with you. 
Okay. So you come to me and you go to stage, and then at that point, do you take your tag back when you go and, to stage? And Gary will get to that. There's two. There's okay. two classifications we're talking about. One's recycle and one's rehab. They mean two different things. And one is you're staying with me, and I'm gonna put you back to work real quick here because I don't have enough people. And the other one, you're gonna go down there and drink a drink a bottle of water and take a little nap. So okay. Uh, not to throw a monkey wrench into this. Oh one. come on. Uh, White Lake. Yep. We have three guys on today. Yep. Full time. They're going to pull an engine yep. and a tanker. Yep. Ninety percent of the other guys are going to show up in their yep. POVs. Yep. Okay. We won't have one of these because we're in a POV. Nope. That big board you're talking about that's coming. No, the big board is the same size as this. Okay. This is your big board. This the same board. thing. This just paper instead of aluminum. Okay, and this is where we're going to put names, right? You will initially start with this on the truck, your working engine, until I see let, let me number run two. Here. How, once we tell yeah. you what the pieces are for, yeah. let, let, we'll, let, we'll walk you guys are, You guys are getting this because you're way you're a little bit Sorry. ahead of us. But <laughs> when, when the first arriving engine shows up, if, I, if I'm by myself and I'm driving this engine, and then I show up at, the, at, a, at a house fire, from inside, uh, position the apparatus, give my size up. Engine one's on the scene of a small one-story residential with working fire on the A side. Engine one's taking a hand line to the A side. Fire attack, search and rescue, where the offensive strategy, engine one has command, upgrade to a box alarm. I get out, I do my 360. 360 is complete, house has a standard basement. Uh, dispatch will be uh, switching to fire ground, please monitor FD3. My tag is stuck on the engine, I'm the only guy. These blank passports with nothing on them ride on the engine. I stick my name on engine one, crew one. I'm the only person here. Some other people show up. This guy shows up. He is the wish that's a pack up. Now he puts his on. He's joining my crew and he shows up. Get a pack on. Now I've got a three person crew. All three of our tags are on crew one. We have, a, we have, a, we have task level accountability now. The three of us got to stay together. And now we're going to put the first hose line in operation. We might be hitting it from a window. We don't have a rescue. We don't have two in and two out. Two more people are starting to show up. We want them to be packed up. Your, your crew number two. So now two more people show up and stick their tags on crew number two. And I'm going to tell them to go on deck A side. Because that means they're going to be right at the door. They're, that meets my obligation for two out. My three-person crew, we're stretching in. I am still in command from inside the fire. We're knocking this down. When I see number two gets here, which is going to be a chief, a command officer, something like that, that has this board, I see number two is going to come take the passports. And now we're going to do the command transfer. I see number two is going to call me on the radio. Chief one to command. And I can't talk very well. I got an air pack. So instead of this face-to-face -face where I tell him what I did, he heard it all on the radio. He heard my eye plan, he heard where I'm at. So now he's just gonna tell me, command, I copy, you've got a three-person crew number one in the basement through the A side operating a hand line. You've got crew number two with two people on deck on the A side. All he's asking me, is that correct? Everything I just heard is right. And I say, all right. Okay. Now he has command, dispatch from chief one, I'll be assuming Main Street command. And he has the passports on the board. If you flip your board over, that piece of paper, there will be Velcro down both sides of this board. He'll stick the passports on the board and write down where those crews are at. So the now on, anybody else shows up. Now the next truck, so people went to the station, this next truck might have a crew. It's got two or three people. They may stick it on on the way, or they may show up and pack up and put it. Anybody else that comes in an air pack, you need a passport. You are not getting into another country without a passport. So when you show up from my department, from your own department, from another mutual aid department, you need names on a passport. If I come POV, I know to get in this fire, I need an air pack. So I don't pass any air packs. I will look at it, a free air pack. I put this thing on, I'm going to take a passport because he ain't letting me in. So I walk by Rescue 2, I'm taking Rescue 2's passport because I got Rescue 2's air pack and I only have my name. And I show up over here. I'm not going to work without a partner. So somebody else is going to show up and they're going to grab one off the uh, utility truck or a squad or something. And they've got to, they show up with a passport with one man. I haven't assigned him yet. He's just standing here. He may rip the names off and say, well, you, don't, you two don't need two passports. <laughs> I'm putting both of you on Rescue 2, your Rescue 2 Crew 1, and you're going to go, uh, I want you to go on deck because the guys are on deck, I'm going to send them in as the backup line now. And now we show up at the door as on deck. The abbreviations, when you stick people on here as passports, the assignments that you give them, you're going to write on here. And as a reminder, what, what the assignments are, are up here. 
Um, now, radio traffic, well, how would they be? Uh, what would they be? Yes. Exactly what it says. What's on that? Okay. You, you're going to have to pay attention to what passport you're assigned to. If you're an Engine 1 Crew 1, Highland Engine 1 Crew 1, that's who you guys are. Listen for that. And that's going to change every time, and I can't beat that. You're going to have to pay attention to whatever the hell passport you end up with. That's your radio identifier. Now, that's how I'm going to get a hold of you. That's why this Crew 1, 2, 3, and 4 thing might get a little dicey. Springfield, yeah, Engine 1, Crew 1 is U4. Springfield, Engine 1, Crew 2 is U4. And Spring, Springfield, Engine 1, Crew 3 is U4. As a commander, am I responsible? Can I just guarantee it? I'm, I'm going to say you don't need two passports. Yeah. Am I, I'm responsible to hold the one I'm not using. Yeah, basically. rip it off, put it in your pocket. Stick it on your sideways. So I don't they care. come back to Springfield. That's don't worry about. Lost no, that's a, if we lose this stuff on that, it's all replacement. Don't worry about that. But <laughs> you are responsible for making the crews up here. I've got a crew here, and I know the red the guy. He's the officer. These are this is these guys, and, and these guys I don't have an officer. So the guy on the top is the man I'm talking to on the radio. He's in charge of that crew, and I'm making those crews, and I'm giving them assignments, and I'm writing it down. What they're doing it? salvage, or they're doing ventilation, where they're at first floor, and what time they started. Bingo, boom, they're on. I got them. Good. Now I go back here to my, my benchmark. Once this is rolling, firefighters will start to figure this out quick. If that's their ticket into the building, they will find an air pack, a buddy, and a passport yeah. and get two names on there. They'll be straight, too. Without breaking stride, right? They put it on, they put this thing over here, and they race it, and we're going to show up. I got two guys, yep. and you're in. Like You two showed up from different directions on different trucks, and somehow got two air packs and two guys on one passport and showed up to the instant commander. It's going to fire. Good for you. And that, that'll happen eventually. Like eventually, people are going to be standing over here and you'll be horse training this thing. Go fish. Give me a name and stick to. <laughs> but it won't take very long. I mean, this is it's like a reward system, right? The guys who figure this thing out the fastest are going to get to go in the fire, and it will not take much training uh, for, for guys to push it. We'll have like four of these. Um, your, your, your primary apparatus should have four on it. Yeah. We left that up to your department. So, Some departments says, I want four on everything. There's a second right, engine. Whatever. The other. Yes. People are attacking. I come up, I grab this off, engine two, it's fine. put my name on it, and go. Give it to me. Give yep. it to you. Or give it to put either put it on the working engine if you only right. you don't have I see one is there, or give it to let's me. Let's say a third guy comes in, yep. he would grab the other one that's sure. so okay. sure. But then you just may take off his yep. and put yep. it on. I may say you're a loner and you got one passport, one guy, I got three of them. Rip it off, make the team here. You are part of this team now. You are. You are White Lake Engine 2 Crew 3, okay, got it? Okay, you guys are going to the roof, ventilate this thing. And the task, remember, the task level accountability kicks in. You have to tell the guys, you two are together. Yeah. You're Crew 3. You two have to stay together. If you've got to come in and go out or get a pike pole, it's imperative that you stay together. And sometimes we just put everybody and roll some names down, and everybody was somewhat accounted for and, and maybe a little bit mobile, and I sort of know where the guy is. That's, that is what's going to bite us. The crews have got to stay together. As soon as you stick them on there, uh, you know this this thing is marriage. And a lot of your a lot of your apparatus got one tag. Ambulances they usually got one tag. Brush trucks, staff vehicles. We didn't allow anyone to make um, accountability tags for positions. Chief one, Springfield Chief one. You call on the radio, call them Springfield Chief one. I mean it should be command, but who's answering you? The crew that we made a tag for, or or Chief Oaks? So we didn't allow that. Okay. So we kept it to apparatus. So you should have engines and tankers and ladders and rescues and ambulances, and whatever. Most of them, uh, the, the, the really the firefighting apparatus got four. These guys probably got one. You can use any of them you want. I don't care. It doesn't make a difference. If you got a good fire going and you got you know you got a brush because you were out driving around the brush truck and you got there, we may be, we may be talking to a crew that's brush brush one. Who cares? I don't care. It's just an identifier for a team. That's all this. So you're saying it doesn't matter which truck you come on. Yep. You have the passport yep. and everybody's accountable. Yep. It's like going, oh, when you go to a fire, does it matter where the air pack came from? You need an air pack and you need a passport yep. and you're going to take them off. You know, you probably wherever you pack up, you're going to steal a passport from so you don't end up without it. When you get down to the IC, he's going to end up with more passports than people. He may repair them into crews so we're clear who the crew is and put the extra one in his pockets. I just wouldn't show without a passport. You might say, you got a passport? No, me either. Go back and get one. So I would take one with me from the beginning. Yeah. But if you got a brush truck crew working on a fire, on a, on a building fire, that's okay. It's not a big deal. It's just a name. It's just a name so we can identify that crew. That's all. All right. So we went through this. The, the initial guys tag in on, on the engine. 
and you, you're going to roll a Velcro, put the Velcro on your engine, wherever these passports are going to go, somewhere near the pump panel area, driver's side. Where that is is up to you. Engineer's compartment, back door, driver's door. If you've got an enclosed pump panel and the door rolls up, you can do that. Some places get crazy and they put Velcro at each hose line valve and whatever line you're stretching in, that's where you put your tag. So team one's on the red line, team two's on the blue line. You can get it as crazy as you want. And somewhere on the where your guys know, because if, on a mutual aid, this ain't gonna happen. I'm not gonna show up that early on a mutual aid and tag it on your working engine. I'm coming in and taking these events.